What up, everyone? This is my Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4 ranking with the TV shows and the movies. I'm not going to drag this video on long. I'm going to make it as short as I can. <clears throat> there is 15 things on this list. There should be 16, but actually 17, but I didn't watch Miss Marvel. I had no interest, so I'm not going to talk about it. And I'm not going to rank the Guardians Holiday Special because that's more of a special. Werewolf by Night is on this list. I know it's not in the MCU, but I fucking loved that special so much I had to throw it on here. So coming in at number 15, you guys are probably going to hate me, but Loki is at the bottom of this list. Um... I don't, I think I did make a review of it, but I took it down because I just couldn't stand the hateful comments I was getting. But Loki was my most anticipated show other than Falcon and Winter Soldier. I was really let down by this show. <clears throat> I didn't like it whatsoever. I didn't like anything about it other than Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. Loki is great. Owen Wilson's character is good. The back and forth between them was good. Some of the dialogue I liked, but for the most part, I cannot get behind Loki. They completely retcon this character. He completely forgets about everything that happens, like in Infinity War, all the Thor movies. And it makes his character very hard to understand because you feel like they just started a new Loki with the same actor. They completely retconned everything. That 100% took me out of the show. I didn't mind the final encounter with Kang. I thought it was different. They didn't go for a big battle. But the scene kind of got boring after a while. And Kang didn't have anything to offer. All in all, I was expecting a lot from this show. And it was just a huge, huge disappointment. Coming in at number 14 is Moon Knight. Another show I was very excited for. I think this would have been a lot better as a movie. Um, the trailer got me so fucking excited. And seeing Ethan Hawke as the villain got me excited. And then this movie uh, show was just a complete letdown. Mostly every time he kills someone, it like there's a camera shake. Or there's something wrong with the camera. Or it goes completely black. The only time they show him killing someone is the stupid monsters at the end. This would have been so fucking cool if it was rated R or got its own movie and they pushed the rating a bit more. Um, the character isn't that likable. I feel bad for Oscar Isaac because he really is putting in his like all his effort. All of these actors are doing good, but it's just the writing and the, like the dialogue that they're given is so fucking bad. It's not their fault. The, you can only go so far with a performance or shitty dialogue. And then it just gets really hard to watch. Ethan Hawke is a villain. Sucked. Everything about the show was a letdown. Go watch my review if you want to hear like a, a full breakdown of why I didn't like it. I'm not going to get into too much here. Um, I got a list down here. Number 13 is I Am Groot. Um... It wasn't bad, but it wasn't necessary. There's a couple of funny moments, but it was one of those things like Marvel did not have to put this out. There wasn't anything special or unique about it. The episodes were literally five, ten minutes long. Um, Rocky showed up. That was pretty cool. But all in all, I am Groot is forgettable, but it is cute. You can show your kids this. And I'd rather watch I am Groot than Loki and Moon Knight. Um, coming in number 12 is Hawkeye. First three episodes I was on board and then it kind of dropped the ball at the end. Yet again, great acting for um, everyone. Haley Steinfeld did a great job. Jeremy Renner actually is kind of growing me as Hawkeye. It might be a bit too late, but since I've had so much time with him, I didn't really like him at the beginning. The action in Hawkeye wasn't bad. The only reason it's so low is because... I thought it was actually pretty good build-up, and um, the ball just really fucking dropped, man. And they destroyed my man, Kingpin. Didn't show him any love. Uh, number 11 is Doctor Strange 2. Uh, another big disappointment. I am so fucking happy that this phase is done with. 
I don't know if it'll get better, but this phase is, we got so much garbage content. Um, Doctor Strange is at number 11. If I can go back, I would put it at 12 and I would put Hawkeye at 11. I enjoyed Hawkeye more. I actually fell asleep watching Doctor Strange for a couple of minutes. My buddy woke me up. Yet again, another movie that was full of cameos that were ruined in the trailer, like Professor X. Um, I mean, Reed Richards was cool and all, but the females kill the males, and there's a huge fucking gangbang battle. They kill Black Bolt, they kill Mr. Fantastic. It was fucking horrendous. They even kill off Professor X. That's not why I didn't like the movie. That definitely like took some enjoyment out of it. But I found the plot to be weak. I liked Wanda. I didn't find she needed to be the villain because we just had WandaVision. And this whole movie felt like it was centered around her. Even Benedict Cumberbatch said it didn't feel like a Doctor Strange movie. And you know it's fucked up when the actor admits that. Everyone calls this a horror movie. It has a couple of horror elements. I wouldn't call it a horror movie. Unless it's like little kids watching this. I can see how they get scared. But like it's not a horror movie because Sam Raimi made it. Benedict Cumberbatch felt like he didn't even want to be in this movie, which is another reason I didn't like it. it. Took me out of the experience. It felt like he was sleepwalking, and when you have like a good actor like him that doesn't feel like he wants to be in the movie, it kind of takes you out of it. And the dialogue was absolutely terrible. I got really bored of the fight scenes. The special effects are great, like always, but. Never, I never want to watch this movie again. It's a disgrace to the original Doctor Strange. <clears throat> Coming in number 10 is She-Hulk. I somewhat like this show. That's why it's at number 10. I do have a couple of complaints. I have reviews of that if you want to watch them. But She-Hulk overall, um, I get the whole fourth wall breaking thing. I get the, you know, her trying to be a lawyer. Some of those episodes are cool. But yet again, they had pretty, I, I like the idea of She-Hulk. It was very low scale. It was realistic. It didn't have this big finale feeling to it. But the writing in this show, especially in the court scenes, was pretty boring. Like the Daredevil show on Netflix. There's so many lawyer and court scenes. But the dialogue is so good it makes you invested. Here it's just boring. The only good thing I liked about She-Hulk. I thought the girl that played her wasn't too bad. And I really like this iteration of Daredevil. I keep hearing that Born Again, the new Daredevil show on Disney Plus, is going to be rated R. I really hope that happens. That would be awesome. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, She-Hulk, my reviews say, you know, bad show. But once I started to watch it more and Daredevil came in, it grew on me a little bit. But I don't really recommend it. If you want, like, a Sunday night show to watch and you got nothing to watch, I would throw She-Hulk on over Doctor Strange. Especially because it doesn't take itself so seriously. Number nine is WandaVision. Yet, like, some of these shows, man, such great beginnings. And they get you really invested. And then it just drops the fucking ball. That's what happened with WandaVision. Great acting. Um, really good, like, first half of the show. I was really invested in seeing where everything was going to go. Yet again, we have a stupid CIA subplot that drags the show down. And, like, I, I, I'm just annoyed of Scarlet Witch at this point. I know this came out before Doctor Strange 2, but I've seen so much of Elizabeth Olsen. I just get burnt out watching her. The ending really didn't do it for me. Fucking up Quicksilver didn't do it for me. That ruined the show. And Vision against Vision was just stupid. Great acting, though. That's what made me keep watching it. Um, number... Seven is, uh, no, sorry, number eight is Shang-Chi. Yet again, man, I keep repeating myself, but this is a fucking pattern in this phase. Shang-Chi, I really, really like this character. I think the actor does a great job. I actually think he has some really good badass moments in this movie. From what you want from an origin story, there's some really good moments. Great fight scenes, great cinematography. I've only seen this movie once. But the parkour, like the fight scene on the scaffolding bridge, was so fucking cool. They did it way better than the scaffolding fight in No Way Home. But like Shane Chi did a great 
mix of martial arts. I like the soundtrack. The acting was great. There was good comedy in there. The one thing that puts this movie at the bottom of the list, yet again, great fucking build up. And the ending should have been just him and his dad fighting. I think that would have been way more grounded and better. But the third act is fucking just bloated as hell. There's dragons flying around. It gets like, and then Chain Chi and his dad are like the second plot fighting. And every Marvel is focusing on this stupid endgame battle that's like in the background of the actual fight that's going on that actually matters. And that really took me out of the movie. If that third act capitalized, this would have been one of my favorite MCU movies ever. But since that third act just fails and falls flat, it ruined the rest of the movie for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, next up is number seven, which is Black Widow. If this movie came out before, like, you know, when it was supposed to, before she died in Endgame or Infinity War or whatever the fuck, this movie could have been in people's like top five i think the only reason i have it at seven is because i like the other ones so much and if i didn't this easily would have been in the top three great family dynamic great acting i don't know why people bash the special effects the only thing i didn't like about black widow was how they fucked taskmaster up and i didn't like the villain of the whole red room blah 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 that thing was just kind of stupid I found it kind of boring Sometimes the writing needed a bit of work, but the action was great. I really liked it. It had like a spy thriller winter soldier feel to it. Um, next up at number six is Thor Love and Thunder. I actually was expecting a lot of comedy. I knew it wasn't going to be a serious movie. As soon as I heard Taika Waititi was going to direct it. And I watched it. And I had a fun time with my friends watching it, man. Like, we were fucking laughing a lot. Um... Obviously, Gore the God Butcher was great. Christian Bale is always good. Um, just needed more of him, man. We needed more. What we got was good, but it wasn't enough. I wish the movie was longer just for him. I'd watch it just for him alone. Yes, there is too much comedy in this movie, and they need to tone it down. But at the same time, I'm very impressed by what they did with Jane Foster. I thought it was going to be, you know, SJW shit shoved down her throats. They did a really good job of just keeping it normal, like a normal superhero movie. But I do think Thor did not have enough action in this movie. She definitely has more. Um, but yeah, Thor is number six, just because I had a good time watching it. I wasn't bored, I was entertained. And I actually really like the third act of this movie, and I like how Christian Bale goes out. I thought it was neat and different, and they could have done something predictable and stupid but they went for more of an emotional ending and i really liked that about the movie number five oh number five werewolf by night bro if this was a movie i know it's not an mcu i would eat this shit up i loved it it's black and white so there's blood because they can get away with it this is only an hour and i fucking loved every second of it the performances are great i cared about all the characters and when you can do that in under an hour, man, you got something magical on your hands. I get why they didn't turn into a TV show or a movie. I, I understand just turning into a special. I'm like 50-50 on it. I love that we don't get more and this is all we get. So they don't get over flooded with these. But at the same time, man, it was so good. I just want more. The violence is great. I love the mystery behind the whole special. And... The only reason it's not higher is because it's only an hour long. And if this was a movie, I really think um, Marvel could do some darker stuff and bump up the rating a bit, if you know what I mean. Um, number four is Wakanda Forever. A lot of people are probably noticing I haven't brought up internals yet. But just wait, you'll find out. And you might get mad. And I don't care because that's a beautiful thing about movies. Wakanda Forever didn't make it in my top three. Not because of the Chadwick Boseman stuff. Yes, this film is missing him and it sucks. You definitely feel it. Bro, I will admit, if this was an acting list and ranking it by the actor's performances, Wakanda Forever would be number one. Everyone in this movie does such a good job of feeling like they lost Chadwick Boseman too. Those were his cast members. 
And sometimes, man, you can really, really feel the emotion here. Everyone is giving it their all. You can tell they wanted to do the best they could. No one's sleepwalking through this like Doctor Strange was in his movie. Great special effects. Um, great music score. I almost teared up a couple of times. I didn't, but I almost did. The tribute to Chadwick Boseman, I think, was perfect. Um, they do, like, start off with it. Like, the movie just, that's what it starts off with, is, oh no, Black Panther's dying, what do we do? I thought they handled it in a really good way, because this script was written before he died, and then they had to go back and change it. It's really not an easy thing to do to capitalize on it and actually make it feel emotional and not rushed. I think they did a perfect job, especially showing the scenes of Chadwick Boseman from past movies. They didn't play any music. It was silence, especially when the movie theater you have is silent. It just makes ex experience so much better. Definitely go see this in the theaters. It is worth a watch. It is a bit too long. There is some side plots I could have done without. But um, the acting just carried this movie. I didn't mind Namor. I liked his motivations. If you want to hear more about Wakanda Forever, go check out my review on that. But yeah, definitely, definitely a must watch. The only thing I didn't like was um, Shiri becoming Black Panther. I knew she was going to be. You know, I was looking forward to it. But it felt so rushed in the movie. It didn't feel like there was any consequences for her or any build-up it feels like she just hops in the suit and she's black panther and i wish they would have done my boy chad with bows and a bit more respect regarding that but other than that this is a pretty fucking great movie and really good action scenes too number three is eternals um i understand why people don't like this movie for me it worked in almost every way the reason why i liked this so much was I thought the acting was great. I loved the tone. I loved the vibe. I loved it. I love how sad and depressing it was. And then sometimes it gets, you know, very emotional. And But at the same time, there is a few positive and upbeat moments. I really like these characters. I really like this team. Um, we can't really call them that because some people, you know, turn evil. But for the most part, they're a team. And I think the action scenes are great. Some of the best I've seen um, in this universe alone. Other than Winter Soldier, I don't think you'll ever beat that in Infinity War. But um, I see why people don't like it. But I never understood the fucking... Like, I get you don't like a movie. I understand. But bro, this movie was shit on. And it still is to this day at the end of everybody's list. Other than mine, I swear. Um... I really like the ending. I think the third act for every movie is important. Just like I said about Shang-Chi, man. Like, those first two acts were so good. And then the ending just dropped the ball. I feel like Eternals isn't too long. I didn't feel the length at all. We get just enough time with these characters. If it was longer, it would have felt too long. I'm happy it wasn't a TV show because, yet again, that would have been too long. Um... I think we just get enough time with everyone to at least not, I wouldn't say exactly care about every single person, but man, this is an entertaining movie to watch. I love the lore. I think they set everything up for such a complicated movie with all this lore and mythology behind it. I really feel like they explained it well to the audience, which made it so much more watchable. It wasn't some Lord of the Rings gibberish. And I really like the dialogue here. I really do. There is a couple of scenes they could have gotten rid of. But overall, great action, great acting, and a fucking great ending. I love, I love endings like this. post credit scene go fuck itself, though. Number two is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm not going to talk about this too much. Um, go check out my review if you've seen it or haven't seen it. But I fucking loved this show. Yes, the Flag Smashers could have been better villains, but for what we got, I thought they were pretty decent. This is the only show I've watched twice, and the second time I actually liked the villains a bit more. There's some stuff I didn't pick up on the first time. There is some great stuff with Bucky and um, Sam here. Sam becoming Captain America. Bucky has some great, great emotional moments. 
there's a lot of character building. John Walker's great. The score is great. The acting's great. The fight scenes are great. Zemo's great. The dance scene is great. Everyone knows it. Everyone was talking about it when that happened. Um, everything about this, man, I fucking loved. The last episode was a perfect way to end the show. Everyone is getting it. They're all, and I was all in all the way through the six episodes. I wish it was longer. Maybe it would have dragged, but I wouldn't have cared because, man, I love Bucky and Sam together and no one interrupting them. They bounce off each other so good. And it is just like Winter Soldier, in my opinion, when it comes to the fight scenes. It is terrific. And you also get, like, casual shit like Sam going to the bank trying to get a loan, but he can't because he was banished because of the blip. Really cool stuff. I love, I fucking love this show. Um, man, if I could tie number two to number one, I would, but I can't because you got to have a number one. Number one is No Way Home. A fan's dream come true. All of Spider-Man rallying together. The only thing I was disappointed about yet again, Marvel needs to work on the marketing. If they didn't show Doc Ock and Green Goblin in the trailer, bro, this shit would have been fucking lit. Like, don't get me wrong. When I saw Doc Ock and Green Goblin, I was, I still, like, yes, this is dope. But I knew they were going to be in the movie. I knew what scene they were going to be in because they ruined it in the trailer. Other than that, the first time I saw this movie, I didn't like the first two acts. I thought they were too slow, like way too slow, and it took way too long. And then when I saw it the second time, I liked it a lot more. This is magic in a bottle. You'll never get this again. All three Spider-Mans doing their thing together. People hate on Andrew Garfield before this came out. Now they love him. Um, I fucking love I mean, I the first Amazing Spider-Man on an emotional level, I think it's great. The second one is just better action-wise. I know there's a lot of villains. They can get a bit cluttered. Still a fucking great movie. And then Andrew Garfield kills it in this movie. Now everyone loves him. And it's just stupid seeing that. Because when you're a longtime fan like me, and you've seen him in other movies like Hacksaw Ridge and other films, it just sucks that they get hated so much. And then now all of a sudden everyone loves him. But to get back to No Way Home, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland, all together, they just kill it. And that was the one thing going into this movie. Everyone was talking about it, but we had no idea if it was going to happen. Marvel did a great job of not spoiling that part. And our Andrew Garfield did such a good job in the interview saying that he wasn't in it. You really believed he wasn't. But you'll never capture that fucking moment again, dude. Um, pretty good action. The only Spider-Man movie in the Tom Holland trilogy that actually has real stakes. Yes, Aunt May dies. And shit fucking goes down, man. And that third act actually... I've never cried in a Spider-Man movie. But I almost teared up at the end of this one. Tom Holland and Zendaya just show how good their relationship is. I didn't like her at first. She grew on me after a while. And ending this movie knowing that Peter Parker has no one with him and no one remembers him just makes it very interesting what they're gonna do with the spider-man 4 he lost his girlfriend he lost ned aunt may he's dead all the fighting with everyone's over it was such a i won't call it a masterpiece i use that word very wisely but it's almost there man there is a couple of huge gripes they do have with the movie but overall, this is one of Marvel's better movies. And they capitalize on all the villains coming in. It was great. Everyone gets their moment to shine. And that is basically my list of the rankings of all the shows in the movies. Let me know what you guys think. And I will probably make a review tomorrow for Violent Night. And that will be dropping on Friday. Check it out.